what up Hyperchain? I don't know why, I thought this would be a fun podcast. Me talking to you about the Rivian IPO, sipping a beer. I mean, I was gonna research the Rivian IPO anyway. Why not record it in scheme with y'all? And uh, just kind of give you what I think about it. You know, this will be more podcast style. I'll put this up. If you don't follow Hyperchange, we're on Spotify, on all that stuff. Um, but I don't know, Rivian seems like the, the, the closest company to Tesla. Um, in terms of competing for a legitimate electric vehicle maker that's going to be able to scale production, have a huge impact, accelerate the transition off fossil fuels, and be a part of the change, the hyper change that we all want in the automotive industry. So I'm a big fan of the idea of Rivian. Um, I visited the factory, shout out to Sean Mitchell. Um, we went and toured the factory, I want to say like two years ago at this point, um, in Normal, Illinois. Saw what's good with it. I was very impressed. Met some of the team. Um, have been following the company. Actually, even before that, went to their launch event in late 2018. They like unveiled the company. So shout out to Rivian, honestly, for being the homie uh, both those times. Rihanna was there. That was epic. Um, but anyway, so Rivian has come a long way. I mean, Although also not that long of a way because three years ago they were still hyping up this prototype, which now they've delivered one of. It looks like it's off the production line, but seriously, no, they have made a lot of progress. And I think Rivian um, is just a really fascinating case study to dive into here. I mean, the rumor right now with Bloomberg is that they want to IPO for $80 billion. And so um, I've also heard that's about right. That's like what they're scheming with the bankers. And so I think that right now the plan for Rivian, if you look about how much money they've raised too, this is simple, you know, VC math. Um, let me just triple check on this. This is just publicly. Rivian has already raised $10.7 billion. So that's what they're gonna raise. And that was up to like, you know, the 40 or $50 billion valuation in the most recent private round that they wanna hit before they, you know, up market 60% or whatever for the IPO at least. So you gotta think that's about 20, 25% total dilution. Honestly, that's a little low. So I would say up until now, Rivian's raised money at about a $30, $30 billion valuation. And maybe they wanna double that. And if you actually look at, at, at the uh, the stats, I think they raised money at 25 billion. Yeah, so earlier this year, in January 5th, 2021, they uh, were reported to be raising money at $25 billion valuation. So this is just startup math. Like the dilution's adding up right. Anyway, the point, you know, the point is here, Rivian, wants to IPO for $80 billion. Um, this is a company with basically zero revenue, losing billions of dollars of capital, has yet to really deliver a vehicle successfully to a customer, uh, make them happy for the long run. They're just basically, you know, showing prototypes. They have the uh, R1T, which is this electric pickup truck, which is the one that just first off rolled off the production line. Um, the blue one, it looks, I, I like that blue color. I'm not going to lie. Um, <laughs> then they have the R1S, which is uh, sort of an SUV version on that same platform. And then they have this partnership with Amazon. And I did actually spot one of those Amazon vans in the wild here in Seattle. So those are being produced, but like, have they scaled beyond like a dozen vehicles? I don't know. So we have a company that's basically scaled to about a dozen vehicles that wants to IPO for $80 billion. I mean, that is insane. Tesla, well, okay, maybe that's not insane, but Tesla was worth $30 billion, delivering 50 to 100,000 vehicles a year, making billions in revenue, you know, validating their product, having an amazing product that thousands of people loved, their brand was leading the electric space, and they're valued at $30 billion. And that's because their business model wasn't working. Their production uh, was leading to negative cash flow. They were losing, you know, like a billion dollars every quarter. It was really tricky to see if they would make it. So Rivian, because of Tesla's success, and we saw Nikola, even though they were a total scam, you know, ride on Tesla's coattails. So we've seen companies ride on this, this like when Tesla blew up and went from a $50 billion market cap to, you know, now it's $850 billion market cap. Everyone assumed that every electric vehicle company was great. They wanted to be smarter and ahead of the curve, invest in the next one. Well, Rivian is worth 80 billion, but they haven't done the hard part. They haven't gotten a positive cash flow. They haven't proven the business model. They haven't proven demand at million units a year, but the market is giving them that leeway. And I think partially that's justified, but partially it's not because before Tesla, Nobody believed in the electric car. It wasn't the future. Now consumers, if you look at the data, consumers are ready. It's not five or two percent of consumers who want to buy an electric car. It's you know fifty percent or more of consumers who want to buy electric cars. Their next car. Well, that's what I feel like it is. And there's no doubt it's growing. And Rivian, that the supply chain is better, the technology is better. They're poaching talent from Tesla. The battery technology is there because Tesla pioneered it. Like it's going to be easier for them to scale and figure this out. But um, I don't know. Ninety billion just seems ridiculous to me. Like. Uh, or 80 billion. I made a joke to RJ Scringe after his tweet that they're going to be worth 90 billion after they, they delivered one car now because it was a new milestone for the IPO. But j all jokes aside, like the reality is, you know, Rivian's two vehicles, I think, what are you buying for $90 billion? Like on one hand, yes, every car needs to go electric. Tesla can't sell all of them. There's 90 million, 100 million cars, vehicles sold a year around the world. Tesla could sell 20 million. That's their goal by 2030. But there's another 80 million we need to electrify. 
if, if Rivian can dominate some of these other categories, could they be, you know, a hundred, couple hundred billion dollar company? Maybe. But the largest market cap automaker before Tesla was Toyota um, with a couple hundred billion dollars or Volkswagen, you know, a couple hundred billion dollars, but that's like one times revenue, 0.5 times revenue. They're making hundreds of billions of dollars of revenue, only valued at hundreds of billions of dollars. And that's because they weren't very profitable. The return on capital suck. And I'm going to put out that video with Meyer so you can see, um, I haven't put that out yet, but after, after watching this, I would already have. You should definitely watch that one where he dives into why Tesla is valued like a tech company, not a car company, because they've proven that they can deploy billions of dollars and make it at an extremely high rate of return. So Rivian has not done that. So I don't know why Rivian gets the benefit of the doubt there for something that's extremely difficult. So that, but but also the market size is there and Tesla's proven it. So I don't know, I, right? Like I'm kind of in the middle as I say this because I think Rivian is an incredible brand. I love the way they're focusing on things Tesla's not. That's genius. Instead of trying to be lucid and copy the Model S, so to speak, with a little more range, a little fancier, like you're still competing with the Model S. The Rivian, the electric adventure vehicle, I, it's their vision was we wanna go off-roading. You know, Tesla, even my friend Julian says like, gets this rep for being like a mall crawler, right? So. Rivian is the opposite of that. And I actually actually think Tesla's a great off-road too. Like I got my Model Y, I drive it everywhere I camp with it, it's dope. But Rivian's tackling their own niche. Like you want to go like, you know, run your car through water and go in the mud and like go hunting or be outside and hike and like, I don't know, it's not really my thing. But people want to do that. And although I'm also like, damn, like I, like what are you going to, you're going to go on some dirt road that my Model Y couldn't have gone on and that was worth getting the Rivian instead. Like you don't have supercharging, you know, I don't know. They're going to build charging, we'll get to that. But Rivian has been tackling a niche that's different. Um, they're going for this electric adventure vehicle per their thing, all that exploring nature. They're going to put their supercharger-esque network in these kind of like Moab places, you know, places you go hiking, places you want to camp. So it's a little different target market than Tesla, which is like sell every, like the more iPhone of cars, I would say. Um, Rivian, I wouldn't say it's like Android at all, but it's like, you know, if you had a phone that was like came with a waterproof case that you were supposed to take hiking that had an automatic satellite collection, connection, ironic, I know, Starlink, but, um, you know, because you would, and it was like built for that, the, the adventure phone, it's only, it's got a niche, right? Like, that's dope, but on the flip side, it's like, damn, that's kind of a small market. Is it actually gonna be that big? Like, how many pre-orders does Rivian have? Are they gonna be able to sell the amount of units to justify that valuation, especially because Tesla's so good at building cars. People don't, they're not giving them credit for this. Tesla is producing a 20 plus percent return on invested capital. They're way better than Toyota, GM, all these companies who are way long around way longer than them. Tesla is way more profitable per dollar in revenue. So Rivian is already getting the benefit of the doubt from that. Will they be able to go through production hell, figure out how to build this car at a very high margin? You're not only assuming that hundreds of thousands of people will buy Rivians if you buy 80 billion, but you're assuming that they will be able to achieve these unbelievable margins that Tesla's achieved that were unprecedented before. So it's a lot of assumptions, and I don't wanna say price per, for perfection, but almost a $100 billion valuation when you've yet to deliver a real car, when you've yet to have a really fine product market fit. Yeah, Amazon ordered 100,000 of your vans because they want electric vans, and they're trying to, you know, they don't wanna deal with Tesla, but the bottom line is, that to me is not, that, that doesn't count as product market fit. And you know Amazon is already investor in Rivian, they're getting a deal on those vans. The gross margin on those is probably negative to start, right? They're like, oh, this will be a dope program because at 50 to 100,000 units, we'll hit scale and get profit on those vans. Okay, that's happening in 2025. That's why, the point of this video, oh, I gotta turn my mic down just a wee bit, I'm getting too loud, okay. Uh, Rivian is S1 is going to come out and this is what I'm okay you know full nerd I'm, I I don't know if these glasses are nerdy or swag who knows right but I'm full nerd and I want to see the financials I cannot wait to get my hands on Rivian's SEC filing the S1 report I mean this is going to be groundbreaking Rivian like I just can't stress enough this is why I'm like the title of this video I'm stoked for the Rivian IPO or whatever like I'm actually stoked for it because as a student of the game as someone who loves studying businesses especially in the EV space Tesla's been my baby for I don't even know how many years my biggest investment I'm so curious to see what the number two that the market perceives EV maker financials look like you know how much capex are they spending per dollar production uh what is their plan what what, what revenue do they have what how many pre-orders like there's so much they're going to disclose and this like book they're about to drop of all their financial data it's going to be so epic to pour i'm going to make so many videos pouring through that but i might even go live when that comes out this is going to be straight up epic so i want to see how much money they're losing i mean rivian at, quick google seven thousand employees right now they, how many does tesla have let's see Okay, Rivian has 7,000 employees as of May 2021. Tesla's got 71,000 as of 2020. So this is a very interesting comp. So Tesla, um, and they have you know booming production, three continents. 
71,000, probably by now they're probably have 80, 90,000, 100,000 employees. Let's say Tesla has 100,000 employees, which is Elon Musk hiring 100,000 people, creating dope jobs. I mean, they're not giving them credit for this. It's dope. Uh, Rivian, let's give them, that, them some credit. Probably 7,000 jobs. That was a few months ago. You know they're hiring like crazy. They've raised way too much money. So they're hiring like crazy. They probably have 10,000 employees. So Rivian has one tenth the employees of Tesla. Um, I think they're going to, you know, Rivian... Let's check hypercharts and see what Tesla is spending on operating expenses for essentially the salary of those employees, although some of them are maybe hourly and included of cost of goods sold. So this might not be a totally accurate metric. But um, just to give you a little bit of a flavor, Tesla with those 71,000 employees is spending about $1.6 billion a quarter in operating expenses. And so you think about that and it's like, okay, well, that's like $6 billion a year, right? 1.6 times 4, 6.4, a little less than that, $6.2 billion a year in operating expenses. Let's say Rivian's doing a tenth of that. Um, they're going to have $600 million in annual operating expenses. Actually, that's not as bad as I thought, but still, $600 million operating expenses. So how many cars do you have to sell to break even with just that many employees, right? Because they're a niche. I don't know if they're going to go as, as big as Tesla. Let's just run this calculation for fun. And this is the, and I'm not pre-recording this because, or like doing it ahead of time, because I think it's kind of fun to do it with y'all and just show you my thought process when I think about a business like this. So Rivian's cars, let's say they sell for 75 grand a pop. That's higher than they are, but I'm just gonna give them cred. Let's say they sell 100,000 a year. That's as much as the S and X sell at peak capacity. Um, $75,000 a car for 100,000 cars. This is basically just the R1T, R1S, assuming they crush it and are super dope. Um, well, for, okay, give me these. 7.5 billion in revenue. So if they can do 75, okay, I feel like that's a little too generous. Okay, let's run with it. 75K car, 100,000 cars, 7.5 billion revenue times 0.22% operating margin. Tesla's about 24% now and they're the best in the world at it for what they're doing and for how new they are. I don't think Rivian's gonna get there that quickly. I think 22% at that level, especially given the non-vertical integration, especially given the batteries, I think that's gonna be like very generous, but let's give them that. So that's 1.7 billion um, of gross profit. 75,000 cars times 100 grand a car, that's 7.5 billion, 22% profit on that for cost of goods sold, 1.7, 1.65 billion in gross profit per year for Rivian for that uh, level of production. So, and then they have employees that are 600 mil a year, but that's with today. So let's say they double their employees to get to that production, but they probably gonna have to triple them, honestly. Let's say they two and a half their employees. So two and a half their employees, and then you got 600 times 2.5. Okay, so 1.65 billion is the gross profit minus 1.5 billion in operating expenses. Rivian breaks even at about 100,000 cars at about 75 grand a pop. That is my back of the napkin math here. So if you're buying the stock today, I mean, dude, Rivian is gonna go through hell to get to 100,000 cars produced. This is gonna happen in three, four years. Who knows, this is why the, the S1 filing is gonna be fascinating, so we're gonna see their internal projections. But you are betting on them to already essentially get to that level of production. That's sort of what my math is saying, is if you buy them, I don't even know, actually. Because that's, would you wanna own a company doing eight billion in revenue at $80 billion? I mean, that seems about a fair valuation. I mean, Tesla's price sales multiples may be a little bit stronger than that. So maybe Rivian's growing like crazy. But so you have to be assuming, now I'm like, damn. So if it's at 80 billion today and you want upside, let's say doubles in four years to 160 billion, a double in four years. I mean, if you're investing in crypto, I mean, that's an eon. But let's just give you that that's what you want for your return. You're gonna be paying 160 billion, which is gonna be 20 times the sales ratio, which is what more than what Tesla has today. And you're gonna be paying that um, for a company that's breaking even. So you're gonna be paying 160 billion for seven and a half billion in revenue in four years. I mean, that's 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 assuming the market keeps this premium on Rivian. That's assuming that the perception of Rivian is that they're gonna go from 100,000 cars to 2 million cars, that 20X growth, um, to get that you know further upside. Because if you're gonna be buying 160 billion valuation when there's only that much revenue, you're assuming it's about to triple again in size. So you're assuming they hit 100,000, oh, they're about to hit 300,000. So when you buy Rivian stock today, if you want upside, I would say at least three to 500,000 cars of annual production has to be priced in, or that's what you have to perceive to be very feasible. Otherwise, you shouldn't buy this stock. If you don't think Rivian can sell half a million cars a year, you shouldn't be buying based on the numbers I'm crunching. So that's just my math. But then on the flip side, I'm like, okay, Tesla's gonna deliver a million cars almost this year, get to that run rate. Then they're gonna be out by four years, Tesla's gonna be delivering like 10 million cars, 8 million cars, right? Could Rivian be doing, you know, 1 20th of what Tesla's doing? Yeah. Could they be doing a 10th of what Tesla's, you know, 800,000 eventually, a 10th of Tesla? Maybe. I don't know. I think Tesla's going to do better with the RoboTaxi, but 
I think Rivian could deliver one to two million cars a year. So they're gonna have the R1, and this is what I love about, it. okay. Oh man, I got the secret sauce. Okay, so they have the R1T and the R1S, right? They're gonna come out with a rally car, which has been leaked, but they they don't confirm it. Every time I talk to a Rivian employee about this, like I, I get to be homies with them in the car show. I'm like, dog, Rivian's looking dope. Like love the car. You know, talk to them for 20 minutes, the battery, this. Oh, you have that little like flashlight that's a battery cell that pops out. That's so dope, dude. Um, I heard you're working on a Gen 3 car though, the rally car. What's good with that? They always close up. The ones that know about it, I can tell because this is a project that's definitely happening within Rivian. At least that's my opinion. You have to, okay, what do you do when you build these electric adventure vehicles? You sell them for 80 grand, you come up with the technology, you do economies of scale, you redesign it, you learn it, you come up with a Model Y Subaru-esque version that's 40 to 45, 50 grand. It's the rally version of Rivian. That's what they're gonna come out with. That's the car you're betting on to be a home run because that'll be the car that takes them from 300,000 or from 100,000 cars a year to 500,000 cars a year if it works. And that's the car that's gonna justify your valuation at 80 billion. So. If you think I'm crazy for talking about this car, if you're buying the stock today, you're already betting on the success of the car that doesn't even exist that they won't even tell me about. Facts, right? But then there's the Amazon partnership. So let's 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 dive into that. Amazon invests in the company. Second I hear about this, I make a video that says Amazon is gonna buy out Rivian. I mean, arguably they should have done that because the valuation would have been a quarter of what it is now. But they're doing a genius move. We'll invest a little bit. We're gonna have the right to buy you. But we'll buy a shitload of your vans at scale at zero gross margin by doing this investment. So we'll see if you can actually say what you do, what you say you're going to do. And if you do, we will buy you. But first we want to test you and we're going to spend 400 million on investment, 400 million on vans, instead of spending, you know, 40, 30 billion on buying you out. They're going to spend a billion on testing you and then have the, you know, genius move on some levels. Bezos, he hates Musk, they're beefing, right? So of course he's trying to compete with them. So that's why I was like, wow. If Bezos has Amazon and he's gonna give a literally an unlimited amount of money to Rivian and RJ to build this shit, they got a chance. Um, and that's gonna be dope. So, I, and I still think that's very true, but Bezos retired, yo. Like his give a shit factor has decreased. And I think this is actually very, it, I'm joking, but I'm serious. Like his hunger to build an electric vehicle, like dude, it's gonna be so hard to build an electric vehicle company. His hunger to do that and pull that off is just gotta be goose egg or it's gotta be dwindled. It's got, it went down, he literally retired. So that to me genuinely makes me take Rivian as, actually I kind of like that though because I was always beating. So, oh, you don't, okay, this is gossip, gossip. So I, I wanna say it's April, 2019. Even before then, Rivian's supposed to come to the auto show in New York City. I text RJ, I've already been to all the events. I know the PR people. I went to the factory or whatever. And I'm like, yo, let's do an interview, bro. Let's do an interview on HyperChange all about um, this. But I had put out a lot of videos about how Amazon wanted to buy them. Amazon had just invested. So I feel like he was rattled. I'll give him that, you know. I would have, probably a good idea to be rattled about that, honestly, because I would have gone hard on drilling him. But it would have been a dope opportunity and we would have been friends. And I don't know, I'm kind of, I'm. I'm salty, bro. I'm a little salt. I'm a little bit salt bay. I'm not gonna lie. I have like a little bit salt bay that he said he was gonna do it. He says, okay, on Twitter. I'm gonna try and find the tweet for this edit. But if I don't, I, I pinky promise you that he said that, um, I don't know if he's is it in focus. Okay. Pinky promise. He said he was gonna come on HyperChange and he didn't. He gets to New York. They're, they're doing all the tweets. He's ghosting me. I, I'm like, bro, is this, I'm, okay. If my Bumble dates ghost to me, that's one thing. If it's the CEO of a company said he's coming on the channel and he's not even gonna follow up to hit me back, it's like, bro, like at least just say you're busy. So anyway, I've actually never been ghosted like that by a CEO except by RJ. So take, right? Like now you know I'm a little salty, but I'm also like, damn, um, you know, he's playing hard to get, that's dope. Okay, so RJ, nah, but seriously, RJ, the fact that Bezos isn't going to be driving the ship, the fact that he doesn't want to buy them out, I thought that could be screw over Rivian is they could focus on building delivery vans for Amazon, not focus on their customer products, and that could lose their focus. I still think they're going to have a problem with not enough focus, too many vehicle programs. But the fact that Bezos isn't going to be the CEO of Amazon and isn't going to buy Rivian and make Am uh, Rivian his baby within Amazon to take on Elon, which I thought was a possibility, is actually to me very bullish for Rivian as an independent company. Autonomy. Let's talk about FSD. So. FSD beta, love it. Tesla's doing it. Tesla's equipping their cars with the cameras. They're collecting billions of miles of data to build the autonomous vehicle. And this is where the partnership with Amazon and Rivian gets very interesting because Amazon has the only other business with Tesla where they can subsidize, they can get paid per mile of data. They can subsidize the data collection on a scale of billions of miles of, of data to actually train their neural networks to build a self-driving car. This is a very key point that Apple doesn't have, that Waymo doesn't have, that no one else has, literally no one else in the world has except for Amazon and Tesla and maybe FedEx and UPS, but they don't have their shit together. So Amazon and Tesla, 
if you deliver your Amazon packages in these vans, you can slap them with sensors, you can train that neural net of that car. So you could literally, and they're already getting paid for that, it's already built into Amazon's business. So in theory, and 100,000 delivery vans, that sounds like the number, I mean, think about if Tesla had 100,000 beta testers, you could actually be getting a lot of data to train your neural network. So the interesting part here is if Rivian's gonna develop an autonomy strategy, I think they're gonna do it with their customers too, but also Amazon could really help them here. And I guess you could say Rivian has the exact same business model as Tesla, selling cars, so they'll subsidize the data collection that way. But I do think there's huge crossover here. So um, Amazon building this delivery van, you know, is a very X factor product for Rivian. I've already explained kind of how the Rivian core brand itself could justify that valuation with the rally car, with the successful pickup, with the successful SUV. Maybe they launch a cheaper pickup and launch a cheaper SUV, which is this rally car kind of Subaru thing. They get to 500,000, 600, 700,000 units a year. That justifies an 80 billion, $90 billion valuation. Then maybe they're coming out with other stuff. So that starts to make sense. But this Amazon partnership is fascinating because if they can get this to work as an independent company, I mean, these delivery vans are gonna be the future. Um, and so let's, you know, they could be 100,000 is Amazon's first order. There could be a million, there could be 2 million of these vans. And if they can figure out how to do them autonomously, I mean, this could be a game changer for Rivian. But it's, then it's like, do you have the battery cost advantage? What if Tesla builds this uh, van with their 4680s they're building in house? I don't know. And that's the other thing. Okay. We didn't talk about the, the vehicle. I have a uh, pre-order on that. I, I can't wait for it. My Cybertruck. Like if we're going to talk about electric pickups, let's talk about the Cybertruck for a second. First of all, I'm obsessed with the Cybertruck. When I went to the unveiling, it it looks like an alien is invading and you are, you're present for this alien invasion. You're like, like, you know, it's so, it's actually the future. You see a Cybertruck pulling up, this shit looks like the future. The Rivian looks like a cute Brooklyn version of an of a normal pickup that got, went electric. Okay, that's dope. But the, the Cybertruck actually looks like it came from the future. It looks like aliens built it. This shit is so far ahead of it. And then you have Tesla, which is designed the steel frame. They designed the way to build the machine that builds the machine. They have the glass, they have the retractable solar roof. They have the 4680, which is gonna enable them towing range, speed, uh, charging distance, all of this is going to be better than Rivian per dollar spent. This is just my, what I think is almost a hands down. Uh, maybe Rivian, R Rivian may be able to catch up eventually, but event but hands down, the Cybertruck is going to be better on range, better on price, better on supercharging, better on FSD, way ahead of time, and probably better on cost. So you're going to be buying a car with worse specs in every dimension against the Tesla Cybertruck. So that's why to me, it's like, I wouldn't even consider the, the Rivian because the Cybertruck is going to look so much cooler. It's going to have so many better stats. It's Tesla. It's been a brand that's been out for 15 years. Rivian, who knows if their range is dope? Who knows if the battery's dope? Like you saw Lucid get the epic range. Okay. What if in five months it dwindles? Like how do you, like the trust in the brand, the trust in the service network. Remember how much hate Tesla is getting for their service network? Like I just think there's so many levels to this. And the fact is, I think Rivian, because they're buying third-party stuff, because they're just starting production, even though Tesla is going to make more money per, per car, not even per dollar spent in revenue, Tesla is going to make more raw gross profit per car on the Cybertruck with better specs for a cheaper price than your Rivian with worse specs for a more expensive price. Tesla's making more money on this. This is an $80,000 car, cost Rivian to build. They're selling for 75. Tesla's selling you a 70 grand car that costs them 50, or that costs them 58 you know? So negative five versus positive, positive 12. No, I'm joking, but maybe Rivian will have like positive 10 versus positive 12 for the Cybertruck. Um, and then you have the software. Tesla's going to make all their money on the FSD revenue. So if you don't have FSD either, how are you going to comp this to Tesla? And how are you going to give them all this credit for A, figuring out the manufacturing that Tesla has, B, having the optionality of the upside of the robo-taxi business, which Tesla's doing with their FSD thing, if Rivian doesn't even have that. So I don't know, I'm playing both sides here, but I think the Cybertruck, like, like that's the problem with Lucid and, and uh, Rivian. Yes, they're, and this is going to be the question. How big is the demand for electric vehicles? Is the appetite, is it Rivian versus Tesla or is it Rivian and Tesla versus Ford? Ford's selling a million pickups a year. If Rivian and Tesla split that and they put Ford out of business, that's 500K each. They're both crushing. It's game over for both of them. I mean, we do have the Ford Electric Lightning. I don't want to write off the Ford Electric car, but I just, ah, is Ford, actually the Mach-E is dope. I've seen a Mach-E around. I've heard the range is solid on that. So maybe Ford is something to take seriously with the, you know, electric pickup thing. But even if they split it, Ford's 300, uh, Tesla's 300, Rivian's 300K of pickups. I mean, they're, they're all going to be a home run, but I don't know. Um, that would be my big, if I was going to buy Rivian stock, my biggest concern would be, okay, the Cybertruck is delayed till Q3 2022, but it's going to be a better product. 
How fast can they ramp production? How are they going to get these amazing motor trend getting their dope review? Are they going to be able to get enough critical mass moving to be able to generate the demand to really solidify themselves as the leader and this true player in the electric adventure vehicle space before the Cybertruck comes out and eats their lunch? Are they going to have specs that hold up with Cybertruck at a good cost while they're making good margin because they're going to be public and shareholders are going to be beefing if they're not making a good margin? So there's so many questions and that's why, okay, come to, okay. Bottom line, am I buying Rivian stock? No, because I'm broke. I just invested in SpaceX. I'll make a video about that. But I have no money to invest. But even if I did have money to invest, I'm buying Bitcoin. I'm buying Ethereum. I'm putting it in hyperwap startup deals. That's what I'm doing with my money. The upside IRR, I think the upside of those is, you know, 50, 100% CAGR a year for the next couple of years. That's what I'm doing. But Rivian, I mean, that, like I said, it, they have to get to 500,000 cars a year to justify a hundred something billion dollar valuation, which is going to be a 50 to 70% upside on what you buy if you get in at 80 billion. It's going to open at 100 billion. And this is the other thing about Rivian. Okay, this is a great last, last piece to end about the business thing. Fascinating from the case study perspective. How many billions do you have to invest to get these factories off the ground? You're going to have to invest. Rivian's going to IPO 80 billion. They're going to sell 8 billion, 10 billion in stock, 20 billion in stock. They're going to dilute everybody. They're going to have 10 or 20 billion in the bank. They're going to be burning through that. They're going to burn it through a billion a quarter with CapEx, with people. They're going to be hiring. Rivian's going to be burning so much money. They're going to have to keep coming back to the capital markets. I mean, they're going to have to continually dilute shareholders and it's going to have to have perceived solvency. This is the biggest thing you should be sh concerned about if you're going to be a Rivian shareholder. Perceived solvency. Is the market going to hold up to the perception that Rivian um, will actually be able to maintain that valuation and be able to execute. Because Tesla, the second you don't believe Tesla's going to do it, and they have to keep raising money from the capital markets, but their equity price is crumbling, their dilution's accelerating, employee morale sinking, that can be what kills you. So if Rivian is not able to maintain the perception that they are solvent, that they are crushing it, which is the perception now, they're not going to be able to raise the additional 10 to 20 billion in the fall on markets to be able to execute their plan. So that is where Rivian, that's to me a huge risk. So when I see upside, upside is a double in four years that with a ton of uh, X factors, including the biggest X factor of they're going to IPO for 80 billion. It's going to open at 100 billion. They're, all their employee options are at these huge prices. And then the equity price is going to go down. Employees are going to realize they're not actually making that much money on the stock. The, the press is going to say we're beefing. And then all of a sudden you have the downward death spiral potential in the middle of the hardest time for Rivian. How are you going to motivate your employees if your stock gets a markdown in the middle of production hell? That's going to be a huge challenge. So if I was Rivian, I would be underpricing this IPO as possible. I would be scheming right now with every single person I knew. I'd call up my bankers. Call up my lawyers. Let us get every single employee stock options as low as possible right now. Let's get them in at fifty billion. Let's get them at forty billion. Let's get them at thirty billion. Let's fuck it. What? Who? What do we? I don't even know what accounting move they have to pull to get their employee stock options to be at a lower strike price than what the IPO at, but that's exact. that would be my biggest focus at RJ. Hiring, keeping the best talent, make sure their stock option prices are low because you are gonna IPO and, and prepare them, communicate. Say, we're gonna pop on the IPO. It's gonna look like we're all getting rich. That's some bullshit. The hard work hasn't even started. The stock is gonna crumble. Get fucking ready. It's gonna be hard as shit. And then we're gonna rise out of that like a phoenix from the ashes in 2023, 2024. You gotta be preparing them for that. Otherwise, I'm very worried about this, you know. Anyway, a little bit of a rant there, but if I was RJ, I'd be like, damn, that's some good advice. Like, should we bring this guy on? Should we just make an advisor, give him free stock? Fuck it, right? Not a bad idea. I'm just saying. What What's like a Rivian moonshot? So Rivian launched this membership club, SaaS product, you get free charging. Free, basically, like, you pay a monthly fee to get access to superchargers. I don't know if I'm a fan of that, but what what do they do beyond the rally car? What do they do beyond the Amazon delivery van? Um, what products does, do they have an electric bike? Do they have an off-roading electric mountain bike? Is that where Rivian goes that they launch on the back of your pickup truck? Um, what is the moonshot for Rivian here? This is where, to me, it gets fascinating. And um, I don't know. I, I kind of want to open it up to y'all. Like, is there a moonshot product on Rivian's product roadmap beyond the, you know, pickup truck, cheaper pickup truck, R1S SUV, cheaper SUV, kind of Subaru S rally car. Then you have the Amazon van, you go to an autonomous sort of electric delivery van concept, kind of like that neuro thing. Um, what happens beyond that? Are there any innovations that you'd be pricing in the market cap, or at least thinking about even like 10 years out, like the Tesla bot? Like I'm, we're, we're scheming, we're down for the moonshot. So I don't know. Um, okay. Anyway, I'm wrapping this up. I, I'm, I'm hyped. We might have to do the have a beer and podcast episodes more often because to me, this was so fun. 
and I'm just so excited to see what y'all say in the comments, honestly. Um, but Rivian's gonna IPO. I'm following out here on HyperChange. I'm gonna, when the S1 comes out, we get to see the financials. We're going full nerd mode. We're gonna read all the financials. We're gonna read all that filing. It's gonna be epic. If you wanna study a case study, whether or not you're a Rivian shareholder, whether or not you're a Rivian customer, even if you are, like, we should be following this. This is epic. This is so cool to learn from. This is an amazing time in history to be alive, to watch these companies try an IPO, to see what's good with the capital markets. You know, should Rivian IPO right now? Is that gonna screw them? Should they have stayed private and done car to X? I mean, who knows? I'm not gonna say, you know, maybe. But anyway, <laughs> um, anyway, this is HyperChange. Uh, keep, let's keep the scheme going. Leave your comments below. See y'all next time. Have a dope day. Peace.